sing, as we pray, as we read your word. God, we pray that you are glorified in this place. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Going. There we go. It's hard in the bright sunlight. You can't see the little lights they give you to uh, tell you that you're on or not. Oh, church, I know it's hot, but ice cream is coming. Woo! I only say that because, you know what, we haven't had any kind of sense of community eating together. So, you know, sometimes there'd be a love feast in churches where they bring a potluck or, or food and we share it around. Uh, best we can do this morning is ice cream. Which is Love good, it. no problem. I also need to mention my tie, my attire today. You might be wondering if you're a guest here or a visitor, what's happened to me. My son gave me a tie for Father's Day that he um, he painted or colored himself. Uh, our kids had an amazing event yesterday. Uh, is Pat here this morning? Did Pat make it? Pat Webb? Great job yesterday, Woo! Pat. Great ah! job. I tell you, Pat was on fire with children's she ministry. Was. Just rocking the online Zoom. And uh, Parker, thank you for my tie this morning. It means a lot. I see Mike Meineker has one. And Matt, you got one of these too? You got yours? Perfect. Oh, Ezra is rocking it today. Excellent. Well, listen, I wanted just to take a few moments this morning to open God's word to remind us of some of the, uh, the amazing attributes of, or characteristics of God, our Father. It is Father's Day, and so we do wish our fathers a, uh, a, a celebration, as Julian mentioned earlier. But when we think of God as our Father and what that means, I just wanted to spend a few moments this morning uh, looking at that. And I promise we will be briefer than normal. Let's put it that way, okay? Because I recognize it's hot. When you think about it, God could have described himself in any way he wanted to, right? He's God. He can do that. And he uses various characteristics in the scriptures in order to describe himself. And he could have picked, uh, picked a, a, a characteristic of himself and just kind of made that the dominant characteristic. But we, we love that in Scripture, there's a variety of ways that God uses and God's people uses to describe the nature of who God is and God the Father specifically. Some of the words you might be familiar with are, uh, as you read the Scriptures are almighty, powerful, uh, supreme. But I love that when Jesus described his heavenly father to us in the relationship that his children can have with that, that God, he used the idea of father. Even so, in, in, in Matthew's gospel, chapter uh, six, he, he, he taught us how to, Jesus was teaching us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, pray then like this. He says, our father in heaven. He could have used Almighty God. He could have used Supreme One. He could have used the most powerful person being in the universe. He could have used Creator. He could have used all of these things, but he chose to use the Word and the image of Father. Which brings to mind, especially on a day that's kind of manufactured like this, all of those earthly qualities of what a, a father can look like at best. But there is something very unique to our relationship with God in that he describes himself as our Father. God the Father, the third person of the Trinity, along with Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit, all equally divine, all co-equal. But yet there's something unique about our relationship with God the Father. Just this morning, a little bit of idea, just to remind us as we celebrate earthly fathers, just about who our heavenly father is and what is this father like first of all church and these are this isn't rocket science but this is designed to just hopefully just remind us this morning of who our god is first of all he's our creator you know driving in this morning coming down the escarpment and looking over burlington and you see the beauty of of trees and then you see here the beauty of the grass and the trees and we live in such a beautiful spot in ontario we see the the fruit of creation we see god as creator now we know that jesus was was part of creation as well 
But our Heavenly Father is the source of all life. And by His grace, He has given us a beautiful world to live in, to enjoy. It is a gift of His grace. And then no more, the, not even just creating this, He also created a people uh, for Himself. He created people and showed them His love. He said, I will love you. And He made Himself a covenant people that would bring people and point people to God. And we, by His grace, are part of that today as His children. A passage like Isaiah 64, 8 says, But, but now, O Lord, you are our Father. You, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. We're not here by chance. We're not here by accident. We're not here even by some sort of string of accidents and mistakes in our genetic code. We believe that there is an intrinsic design placed upon humanity that distinguishes us from all of the other creation. And we have a Father who is part of that. We are the clay and He is the potter. And Isaiah declares and the people of God declare, You are our Father. Not only did He create us, but then He also shapes us. Our Father is involved in the shaping of us. By His Spirit, He is also part, uh, He is the one who is, is causing us to become more and more like His Son, Jesus, which is our purpose. I, call, I say that He lovingly trains us. And there's a passage in, in the book of Hebrews that for years, I, I think it was always used to kind of, we kind of hold it over each other's heads that our, our Heavenly Father, just like a father on earth disciplines us, so our Heavenly Father will discipline us. But I think when we look at what the, what the writer of Hebrews is trying to say, is that he's using the imagery of uh, athletics here. He's using the imagery of training. And as an athlete disciplines themselves, or a coach disciplines an athlete and trains them to become better at their sport, so our Father, our God who loves us, is involved in lovingly training us. Even if you read that word discipline that's in Hebrews chapter 6 there, it, it, it's the word discipline, but it, it's got an ethos of training. My job as a parent, as a father, along with Jolene raising our children, is not just to discipline them because I kind of take some cosmic joy out of their, you know, being disciplined. Our task is to discipline, to train, to help them become better human beings. And our God, by His grace, He lovingly, trains us by his spirit and disciplines us because he loves us as his children. And the discipline is not punitive, it is, it is corrective, it is to mature us, it is to help us to grow. And sometimes we are in difficult situations and our Heavenly Father is not outside of those situations and yet he sees us and he is actively working in those circumstances in order to conform us into the image of his Son by his spirit. He lovingly trains us. Another characteristic of our Father, our, our Heavenly Father that we look at today is that He provides for what we need. We all know the stories of fathers who neglect their children or their families. We've all heard the stories of fathers who walk away and don't provide. Those stories are all too often told. It is a problem. But we have in our Father, our God, our Father, a God who never walks away, a God who never shirks his responsibility. He is a God in which he provides for what we need. And in his provision, he shows himself to be our Father. And we all have stories for how God has provided for our needs. The reminder this morning is that we have a God, our Father, who provides what we need not only that is, is another point of who our God is, is that he also gives his children wisdom. We all need wisdom in this world. I love the fact that the scriptures, God's word to us, is filled with sections of, you know, five sections of writings that, that help us to be wise about who our God is and how we relate to him. And he gives wisdom to his children. Ephesians chapter 1, 17 reminds us of this. He says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. 
So yes, we have a God who, who created us, who lovingly trains us, guides us, provides for us, but also provides for us in a very specific way in giving us wisdom. The wisdom so that we might know him, so how we might know God and the way that we will love him and live for him. We know that that wisdom is good. As James 1.17 reminds us, in the spirit of wisdom, and when we need guidance, when we need God's wisdom and how to live and how to operate our lives, our businesses, our family, James 1 says, every good gift, perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. See, this is not about him just giving us things. This is all about, in that first chapter of James, giving us the wisdom on how to live life. How to know God, how to live with each other. Our Father gives His children wisdom. And the inspired word is the ultimate source of wisdom for us and truth. And if we've ever needed a world that, if we ever have seen in our world today that a world that needs wisdom and truth, it's now. So we, we lovingly ask our Father to give us wisdom, good wisdom and how we can love him, love each other. And finally, he, he is a father who always welcomes us back. Even as Mike was painting that picture of perfect children, and I was like, you know, we want to jokingly put our hand up, that, oh yeah, I'm perfect. We all know deep inside that we are fall so short of perfection when it comes to how we live. Many of us want to think that we've got it all together, but we know that there is... There has never been a time where we have been perfect. We are always lacking in our perfection. And that is called sin. The Bible calls that sin. And we have a God, church. We have a God that we are declaring today to whoever hears it and whoever is listening, that we have a God who always welcomes us back no matter what our sin is. That there is no sin too great that God our Father will not forgive because our Father always welcomes us back. The passage that I love to go to at times when I talk about this is to think through the story of the prodigal son, and you can read it for yourself in Luke chapter 15. But therein, Jesus is painting a picture of what it looks like for a wayward son to return, and then also a son who's kind of left, been left holding the bag and holding up all the responsibilities and how to accept that wayward son back. But in there, there's this graphic, illustration that Jesus uses, and I don't think he used words uh, um, casually. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a phrase that he uses in that passage that when, the, the, when the, the, the son is returning, he's come to a sense and realized he's squandered the father's wealth and he's walked away from his father and he knows, I need to return to the father, but my father may not love me. I've just dishonored him and everything I've done. What does it say? It says that his father saw him from afar and ran to him. Without getting too far in the weeds here, older, mature Jewish men did not run. But God, in that picture there, shows himself to be a God who actually runs to the relationship, who's never there. And there's a picture of love that is there, and he always welcomes us back. My friends, what's the so what this morning? As we sit on a parking lot with people that we haven't seen in a long time face to face, we remind ourselves that we now can have a relationship with the Father. A relationship with our God the Father that is characteristic of the things I've mentioned this morning. And even more so. I mean, I'm just kind of touching the surface here this morning. And regardless of your earthly father, and whether they were near perfect or not, the question, the question and the statement that's so what for us today is that we can know God the Father through Jesus Christ. That's what makes us the body of Christ, is that we have a Heavenly Father and we can know God the Father through Jesus Christ. And it's through Christ alone that we can find meaning for life, forgiveness of sin, and we can find a renewed relationship. And it's through Christ alone that we can have a new mission and a new purpose, and including reaching out to those like you and me who have never experienced maybe an earthly father that was any good, we can point them to an ultimate heavenly father who is perfect.
and loves them. This is the power of the gospel church. As a Christian, you can testify to the greatness of God and because a great God who loves you, who says that I am your father and you can be my child, and even to abandon children, he says to them, you can be my child. As a Christian, you can testify to the greatness of God because a great God loves you and calls you back and accepts you. You are accepted by God the Father. This is, our, this is the Father. This is the heart of the Father of God. This is our Father. And Jesus calls us to pray. If you do not know this Father, you can know him today through believing in Jesus Christ that he came and died on the cross for your sins and paid the penalty for your sin. All of your sin, all of your brokenness, he took on himself and paid the penalty and said before God, I'll pay the penalty that they could never pay. And thereby, we can believe in him, trust him, and he will be your heavenly father as well. Let's not lose perspective on God the Father this morning. And I pray that you know God as Father. And even as we've reflected a few moments on the beauty of God our Father, that this morning it would just lift your hearts and as we worship this God who is creator, who lovingly guides us, who provides for us, who gives us his wisdom, who welcomes us back when we fail, and that we can sing and, res and, 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 and respond with confidence and point others to God, this Father, our Father. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the way in which your word speaks to us about who our Heavenly Father is. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for guiding us, disciplining us, training us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for giving us the wisdom that we need in order that we might know you and know each other. And thank you that you welcome us back even when we fail because Christ's sacrifice was big enough for all of our sin. But I pray as a church here at Calvary that we would respond to our Heavenly Father in worship and adoration. Thank you, God. I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning through your word, by your spirit. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. If you've got the energy, let's stand and sing in response. <laughs>
The world that he gave us is one and only Son to save for God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus is waiting, God so.